the owl post packaging, you will need some craft paper, some owl post images printed on sticker paper, some decorative washi tape if you so prefer, and some twine to close up the package. First, crumple up the paper to make it look aged and worn. We want it to look like an owl traveled long distances to deliver this package. Wrap your package as normal, but don't use too much tape, as we're using the twine to keep it all closed. Measure out your twine and close up the package. Tie it with either a bow or a simple knot. For a bit of decoration, I added a second set of twine in a bow. Cut out your owl post stickers. And stick them on your package. It's a bit easier if you do this before the twine, but I'm not too smart and I did it after the twine. I added a few stamps to make it look more like official postage than just a simple Christmas present. As a final touch, I added a wax seal to keep everything closed. And there you have it, an Owl Post Christmas present. For this first set of ornaments, you will need different sized keys, and decorative butterflies or moths. My keys were initially charms, so I had to take off the ring on top and sand it down a bit with an old nail file. Once the top was all smooth, it's ready to go to the next step. Remove the wings from the decorative butterflies as close to the base as you can. Take some aluminum foil and position the wings. Add a string of glue in the middle, enough to connect both wings with a little space in between. Now attach the key. Let it dry, then peel it from the aluminum foil. To make it into a proper ornament, I took some twine and untwined the little strands so I could use just one small strand on this tiny key. And here you have it, three flying key Christmas ornaments. Along with the flying theme, the next ornament is a broomstick. Take some oven-baked clay and roll it flat. It doesn't need to be too flat, but it should be pretty long. Roll out your desired amount into about the width of a chopstick. To make my broomstick a bit more fancy, I decided to twirl the handle before I stuck it in the oven. To make this into a proper ornament, take a jewelry pin with a loop at one end and stick it into the end of the broomstick handle. Bake it according to the instructions on the package and either leave it that color or paint once it's cooled. I decided to make mine look like a classic broomstick, so I painted it a light brown.
Take some twine and cut a length off and divide each strand from the main length of twine. Cut this small section into small one or two inch lengths depending on your preference. Apply some hot glue to the end of the broomstick and begin to stick on the little strands. The more the better, so keep layering and adding as many as you can. Take some red twine and tie that around the bottom. With some scissors, you can tidy up the bottom of the broomstick a little bit. Tie a bit more of that red twine through the pin in the top and tie a knot at the very top. And here we have our flying broomstick to go with our flying keys. You will need one cup of milk, one eighth of a cup of butter, one eighth of a cup of brown sugar, three cups of cream soda, about 50 grams of instant butterscotch pudding, and half a tablespoon of vanilla. First combine the milk with the butter in a small bowl. It's better if the butter is slightly softened already. And add the brown sugar on top. Whisk it all together and try to get out as many clumps as you can and then stick it in the microwave for about one minute. Now that everything is dissolved, add in the cream soda. If you're like me and your bowl is too small, this is the time you should switch it to a bigger bowl. Whisk in all the butterscotch powder. And add the vanilla. This is again going in the microwave for about two to three minutes or to your desired temperature. And here we have it our warm sugary butterbeer perfect for christmas time and those cozy nights at hogwarts <laughs>